how to uh, upload stuff to Skills Commons. So Rick, are you ready? I think so. I've just hit the record button, so I think we're ready to go ahead and get going. Great, and, thank um, you. Thanks everyone for joining today. Um, we'll have a recording available as well as the presentation uh, for you at the end. So uh, if you miss something, don't worry. It'll uh, we'll have links as well to all the screen shares and things that I share uh, with you when we do the tour of Skills Commons as well. Um, so um, anybody who um, needs help uh, with anything, just can um, contact me at the email here at the bottom of this screen, support at skillscommon.org. That'll come directly to me. Um, just a reminder about, uh, and I'm sure you guys are aware of this, but uh, September 30th, uh, for round three of 2017 is the last day that submissions can be uploaded to Skills Commons, or is the deadline, I should say. Um, and so for round four, it'll be uh, 20, uh, September 30th of 2018. Um, so uh, uh, if you can begin earlier, that's better um, uh, to get your materials up into the repository, and um, that way people can begin to start using them. But um, as far as the uh, submission process, we've got uh, some steps here outlined. Um, first, create an account, prepare your materials, upload your materials, edit and uploaded uh, materials if you need to at that point, and then some, some uh, helps here on closing out your grant. And so we've got some um, materials in Skills Commons Support Center that we're gonna show in a little bit about helping you meet the CC BY license requirement. I know you've had some training on that just here a little bit ago. Um, we've also got some help on ADA compliance as well as subject matter expert reviews. And again, all this can be um, obtained here for setting up your account and getting ready to manage and upload your materials at this uh, URL down here at the bottom, okay? Um, but just for more information on the submission process, again, the URL is there, and then on the policy from the D Department of Labor, whoops, sorry, sorry. Um, at the TAC Workforce GPS site uh, for their FAQs on the submission process and what's, what's required to be uploaded and, and that sort of thing. So um, more on the, I would say, the administrative policy side where um, the Skills Commons site has more of the technical support for you. So I'm Rick Lemadu, I'm the Associate Director for SkillsCommons.org. So we're gonna talk about the tools to help you with your move, uh, moving all your boxes of materials and content and how to get the, the best way to get those uploaded and packaged for um, delivering um, into the repository here at Skills Commons. So we'll just demonstrate the submission process um, here this afternoon or this morning, and then, um, and then we'll, um, allow some time for questions if you have some at the end, okay? So with the up uploading process, with good planning, it's, it's easy. So just like you're moving to a new home, you know, how you organize and, you know, kind of package your things to get them so when you get to the other side, you can find them and be able to, uh, you know, get them organized and so you can, uh, you know, get on your uh, business pretty quickly. So we've just got a few things here just to kind of as reminders to help you um, about how you want to kind of package your materials and then about uploading, you know, once you have your account of Skills Commons and packaging. Um, and we'll sh share a little bit that, about that as we go through. And then um, uh, just a few things about comments about the size of files. I know that comes up a lot. Um, we can, uh, we can accept a file up to an individual submission up to one terabyte, um, but just remember like in the example here, in this uh, block here, the you know, a 500 megabyte file is gonna be pretty hard for people to load sometimes depending on their connection speed. So, you know, if you can put them into smaller uh, uh, submissions, that would be the best, you know. Um, you know, like for videos and things like that, rather than zip them all up into one, submission, you know, put them in as separate, you know, maybe at 20 megs a piece instead of, you know, one big file of, of a bunch of videos or something like that. Okay. Um, and then the other thing, and I know this is another question that comes up quite a bit, is how many people should be uploading from our grant? And every grant project is going to do it differently. Uh, our recommendation is you have one or just a few people upload just for reliability and the description and, you know, uploading process for uh, submissions. But if if you're all gonna do it, at, you know, differently at your institutions, you know, have a different person do it rather than the consortium lead, um, that's fine, that's totally up to you. It's just our recommendation. Um, 
but at your institution, it'd be best if you didn't have a bunch of different faculty doing it, um, just because of the, you know, you can get a little um, less streamlined and things like that. And once you get into the process, it, it's pretty, pretty simple, um, pretty straightforward. Another question that comes up quite a bit is like, what kind of documents, what kind of file formats, you know, can we do images, videos? We talked a little bit about that already. Um, basically, pretty much anything um, that you're creating, we can, um, we can do. Um, if you've got a, a different file format from the ones listed here, just let us know and we'll um, work with you on that. Um, we had someone with a, another a third party program that they had used, which was a different file format and we were able to help them. Um, with uploading and then giving instructions to folks if they wanted to download uh, their material. So, um, so that's information is there. So now uh, I'm going to go ahead and do a screen share of the Skills Commons site and just kind of show you some of the support um, uh, services that we have available in the repository. And so, uh, just a second here. This should join. Uh, okay, let's see. I'm going to have to do a new share. Um, and Okay, so um, you should all see a new screen up now. Um, actually, I want to do just the application, so give me a second. There we go. Okay, so we're at the Skills Commons home site. So for those of you that are going to be uploading uh, materials, and um, Kathleen, is this, is this uh, how we want to do this, to show the submission process, correct? Or is there something else you want me to focus on? No, that looks great. Okay. So um, the first thing you'll need to do is, um, uh, well, I'm going to sign in. But if you're not a, you know, don't have an account yet, um, you can't, you know, sign in. But we'll have, go ahead and show you that process here when we go to the um, support center. But um, once you have your user account, then you just come here and you start another submission. Um, previous submissions that you may have um, uploaded to Skills Commons will be here in your archive submission. So. Um, you'll be able to find those here, and if you wanted to make um, edits or things like that to a submission, you can click it, and it will um, open up to that submission process or to that um, description page, and then you can create or do the edits from there. Okay, so um, I'm going to go to the support center because this is the first thing you'll need to do if you don't have a Steel's Commons account. Now, again, I didn't have to be logged in to go to the support center, so. If you're just browsing and looking for materials and content and downloading materials, you don't have to have a user account, but this is for folks who are uploading the materials. So the first thing you want to do is go to contribute and manage, and you'll want to create a Skills Commons account. And this is where you'll go in and just fill in your information, and you'll select your TAT grant project, you know, GP STEM from down here in the list, and then um, if you have a project website, you can do that, and then click Submit. And then that'll come to, um, to me, and then we'll go ahead and create a user account for you and um, get you set up so that you can begin to the upload process. In the next phase, then you'll want to begin to prepare your materials. And here's where we have some helpful guides and um, interactive resources for you on satisfying the accessibility requirements. We've got evalu accessibility evaluation manuals to help you um, go through and make sure that your content meets the um, requirements for the grant, and as well as additional accessibility guides and resources. So that's all available um, there um, under the Satisfying the TAC uh, Grant Accessibility Requirements. Again, just to supplement what you just heard in your previous um, session on CC BY licensing, just some uh, helpful materials here on um, Creative Commons licensing, implementing the CC BY license, adding a CC by license to a learning management system, if that's something you're doing and doing course exports from, for example, Blackboard or Canvas or something like that. So um, those are all available. We also have a complete FAQ section on CC by licensing. Um, again, this was created as a result of working with previous grant projects um, and a lot of the questions that they had. So um, we invite you to uh, look there if you've got questions, if not, you can't find it, just shoot me an email and um, I'll help you with that. But um, that'll be in our FAQ section. Um, uh, and then also we've got help on, on packaging content from learning management system, depending on the, the one you have, you can select that um, from the list. Also um, some helpful hints on enabling others to um, reuse your materials, some guidelines, some things to consider, 
you know, when you package your materials and when you're getting ready to do your move, you know, kind of, you know, what are the strategies for submitting large files of steels comments? Those are all there to help you. And then um, some help here on assuring the quality. If you're doing online or hybrid courses, um, we've got some links here to help you with that on the side of the actual delivery system that you're using to ensure um, the quality there. Uh, again, this is something that uh, many projects are doing and using on their own. So if you have like, for example, one of these here, maybe quality matters, for example, or people that are already you know, qualified or certified for, for that, you may just go ahead and, and do that and upload that report along with your um, submission when you submit to Skills Commons. Okay, all right. Um, so that's the, the step two. The step three is to upload your materials. And here we have step-by-step -step user guides for a single submission. Um, and just to reiterate, you'll have in your uh, grant project collection, you'll have two collections. You'll have a learning resource uh, materials collection, and you'll have a program support material collection. So what's the difference? Well, in the learning resource material types, we have this, and this is in your presentation. It'll be in the PowerPoint that you'll um, have and the links will be there. But this kind of gives some definitions of what are we thinking about when we're talking about learning resource materials. So these are the types of things that you're going to use when you teach a course. All right, so the educational materials. And one of the things that um, we need to be careful about and why I'm stressing it um, with you folks because you haven't started upload yet is if you're teaching a course, um, an online course, and you're only going to upload a syllabus, say for example, you your grant project purchased like material from Cengage or Pearson or some proprietary like welding material content, but you created the syllabus and you say, oh, that syllabus is for an online course, and you mark that as an online course, um, it's really not helpful for folks when they go to look for stuff and they find a syllabus that's labeled as an online course because they're thinking, oh, that's an online course. So if you would pick syllabus rather than online course, even though it was for an online course, um, uh, in, at, but you're only uploading, like, example, a Word document, a syllabus, because we, we had a ton of those and we went through and cleaned those up in the metadata. But um, so that that's one area that um, we see a lot of, um, you know, projects having a, a challenge on and, and I, I can understand why because of, oh that's a, for an online course um, but if it's part of an online course and you, you're already including it you know with a, like for example a learning management export um, file from Blackboard or Canvas or D2L or Moodle or something like that then that's fine you could say as an uh, extra material type that it had you know in your in your um, keywords you could put syllabus okay any questions on that on that piece forward or anything else at this point okay um, then uh, there's also a batch submission guide so um, there's a limit though on that of 375 uh, megabytes which will allow you to upload 20 materials at once as a batch and so um, we've got uh, a, a, a guide for that if that's helpful for you and then also if you had exams or quizzes and you didn't want students to have access to that, um, we have an embargo you know, guide um, to teach you or to show you and demonstrate how to do that uh, as well. And then there's also videos uh, too on the step-by-step -step process for uploading uh, material to Skills Commons. Um, also, there we've got um, material description and industry partner fields. Again, these are the open, and you'll, as you'll see as we go through the upload process, these are kind of the open fields where you'll actually type in some information about your grant, about the material. And so it's best if you don't just say, like if, for example, you're uploading a syllabus or it's a, let's say, uh, a course that's labeled like IC302 or 201, and you just type in IC201, that really doesn't tell anybody much about that. So if you could give as much description about that as possible, that would be great. And then also um, the industry partner field is an open field. So we just have a little bit of um, help there in this guide just because of some things that we've seen with previous grant projects. Um, and then here's a, a webinar a recording on uh, Creative Commons and the submission process that we did previously a few years ago. So that might be helpful as well. That's just there as a resource. And then the second collection is your support material collection. Again, the user guide, the batch submission guide, an embargo guide if you need that. 
um, and again on the material and uh, industry partner fields which are open which you'll type in so just some help there and again it's a video for you if that's helpful um, to uh, watch that you'd like that better um, and then if you need to edit or delete something that you uploaded like oh I made a mistake or whatever I uploaded the wrong file and I didn't mean to do that um, we've got a, uh, some guides here to help you as well um, which will uh, walk you through that process okay so those guides are there um, on the program support material descriptions we've got definitions for those as well and these are things that you know that your grant management um, maybe outreach materials um, student support thing uh, services or um, recruitment you know your subject matter expert reports accessibility reports course design all that sort of information is here and just as definitions for you okay any anything else on um, on these submission guides or user guides before we move on to the next piece. I'll show you some of the, okay, I'll keep going, is that okay? Sounds good. Okay, so um, here's the edit and delete. So uh, link there is step four, if you needed to do that. Um, so there's a complete guide there as we just mentioned. And then finally, the completing and closing out your grant. So when you're uh, just about done, and um, like for a grant manager, we've got, uh, uh, a guide to help them to kind of go in and assess and look at the materials that have been submitted and they can kind of check off, make sure everything's got the CC BY, got the DOL disclaimer on it, it's got the 508 compliance, ADA stuff is all marked and all that good stuff. So, and then just making sure, the biggest thing that we've seen uh, folks leave off is on the content that they upload, the, the deliverable, sometimes doesn't have the CC BY license on it anywhere. Um, and all we ask is that, um, if you do a, like a Word document, is it only has to be on one page. So it could be on like the first page or the last page, if it's a 30-page document, for example. So you don't need to have it on every page, but um, you'll want to make sure the CC BY license is on there. And then this next section here is just we created these uh, voluntary templates to help you fulfill the requirements for the SGA uh, around accessibility, creative commons, subject matter expert, reviews, um, and then some industry leading uh, e-learning open standards and again this was in response to previous grants just asking if we had templates and things that folks could use and then you could upload this with your um, when you do your uh, submissions the skills comments that you've met those um, requirements so that's that's what these are for these are again voluntary you don't have to use them they're there for you um, if it's helpful okay um, so at this point I'm going to go and um, if there's no other questions, um, begin to upload. So an upload process. Is that okay, Kathy? Or there's any um, comments or questions right now? Should we keep going? I just I just wanted to note that yep. the stuff that when he's referring to stuff for, for project managers, that's stuff for our office to worry about, not for you guys to worry about. So like completing and closing out your grant, that's not stuff that you should be thinking about. That's our job. Good. Okay. So, um, so I'm going to go to contribute materials. I'm going to start at the beginning. I'm going to start a new submission. Okay. And just for, um, you know, de demonstration purposes, I'm just going to pick the first one here in the list, just, you know, um, and then I click next, but you'll, you won't, as an administrator, I have access to everybody's project skills commons as you see here. So there's 256 in the total. Uh, but when your your account's created, you'll have access to either the learning resource collection in GP STEM or the support materials. You won't see a, a big list like that. Okay, you'll just have option one or two, learning resource or support materials. I'm going to upload something here to the learning resource collection. I click next, and then I enter the title of the material. I'm just going to do just an example here. This would probably go in the program support materials collection, but the learning resource collection is a little bit um, more steps involved, so I want to write this. The program support material has about two or three screens that you upload, you know, you go through in the upload process. And for both collections, this first page is the main page where you, you have to fill in information. But fortunately, most things are just a drop down menu. The only thing would be the fill in the um, accessibility template. I mean, the description page, description field, and the um, industry field. So I'm just going to go down here and pick. Um, 
my institution and we just created one for us for CSU. So I'm just going to use this one, but you would pick the one that pertained to you. And if yours doesn't show up here in the list, like Masoi, I think that you say that right. I saw it or community college. Um, then Masasoi, if, if it's not, if yours isn't in here, um, let us know and we'll get it added. It'll take us a restart of the server overnight. So it'll be the next day before it shows up. Okay. Um, so if you have a copyright owner or something's different on the attribution, you can put that in here. If you are using something um, that, that from someone else, you want to put that copyright there first, you can do that. Um, if you're wanting to do authors, you can do that. This isn't required. This is some uh, grant projects don't fill this in at all. Others do. So it's all up to you on how you want to do that. Um, and then the primary license, you select that, the CC BY attribution. And then if you've um, got other third-party resources in the work under, offered under different license from the above, you can indicate that here. Okay, so you can do that that way. Um, and then you'll uh, select your primary material type. Um, so I'm just going to go in here and do like assessment tool. Okay, um, if there's more than one material type, you can uh, hold down your control or command. Um, uh, shift key and it will um, you can select more than one option here okay like that okay but um, I don't have any other ones Whoop, on that um, so um, okay and then in the description field this is where you know here's one that you have to type in you know the information so this is a voluntary template Okay, and um, so I'm just, just going uh, to um, verify content has met SDA requirement. Okay, so that's just, just to demonstrate there. Um, and then if there's a program note, um, you can put that in there, like if it belongs to a bigger course, maybe it's just a module that you're uploading separately or a video separately from the course or whatever, you put something in later, um, you can say that as part of a construction. Like here we have the example of foundational math skills course as part of a program construction. Um, and then the date, just type that in, drop down menu, uh, May, the 23rd. Okay, uh, then you pick your tech grant round um, three. Um, industry partner for us, I'm just gonna put Department of Labor for now. Um, but this is the other field that you have to fill in, okay? So this one won't let you get past it if you don't do it. And then um, you can pick your NAICS code, whatever it belongs to, um, and then your, your SOX code. So you just come down through here. Again, the SOX codes and the NAICS codes and the, the instructional program um, classifications are in the user guides at the very end in the appendix. So you don't have to, so you can actually have that list ahead of time, you know, in the appendix, just sitting on your table or, you know, in a screen next to you on a, in a Word document or PDF, and you can um, find those there ahead of time. So you don't have to wait till you come to the upload process. And then you'll pick the credit type. So um, if it's credit or non-credit or um, none, I'm just gonna pick none. And then the credential type, here, just for our example, it's none. Uh, you need to pick up uh, educational levels. I'm just going to pick first, uh, first year. Um, this is just a uh, presentation only, I guess. Um, likelihood of reuse, probably not. Well, um, so this is where you will take the opportunity if um, you think somebody would reuse the material that you're uploading. So if it's like an um, like management notes or team meeting notes, probably no. But if it's maybe like a brochure for an outreach for students, um, or it's a course, you might want to go ahead and click yes. But for, for the purpose for this one, I'm just going to pick likelihood of reuse, no. And what happens is then this will go into the archive area. So what we're trying to do is to keep the good stuff that people are uploading coming up to the front of the search, at the top of the search menu, rather than just kind of everything at once, you know, so it kind of helps to filter it out a little bit. Um, and then um, your quality of subject matter expert, if you're using an SME report, um, blah, 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 all the way down through here, an approved rubric or an evaluation. I'm just going to click other for this example. And then your online hybrid course, we wouldn't have one because this is an online or hybrid course. But if you had one, you could select that. And then the quality of your online rubric, so if you're, whichever one of these you're using, or if it's other, if it's not in this list, 
and then you can provide a description here as well if you'd like to. You can enter keywords and phrases, you know, in here um, to tell a little bit more because these words and subjects that you might use or phrases will be uh, part of the search index when people um, go into Skills Commons to search and look for material. Um, you can click the language, you know, English or United States. Um, or don't worry about that. Um, the time required, if um, you've got the information on that, you could put that in there. Um, did you reuse materials from Skills Commons in the creation of this resource? And I did. Um, and I'll need to put, put that URL in, but I don't have it right now. Um, for demonstration purposes, I would go back to the closing out your documents and I could get, grab that and put that in there. Um, and then additional public access to materials. If you have got one out in another um, repository, or maybe you've uploaded a video from YouTube or something that your grant project has. Um, or if you're making a derivative work, you could add that license or that URL there too. Okay. Um, and then coming down to the, to the next page, we're getting close to being done here. Um, your URL to your formal accessibility policy from your institution. You could just paste the link in there. Um, if you've got an accessibility um, statement, you could pop, post that there. Evaluation report for your item, if you have an, a URL for that. If you've, um, you've, you've got that, you could put that there. For example, if you're uploading uh, maybe a website or something like that, you could post those things there. But that's, again, these aren't required field. This field here isn't required. Um, but um, you should have, you know, your institution should have a policy on accessibility that you can put in there. And then again, here, these are all um, things about the, the actual content itself on um, 508 compliance. Um, depending on the type of material it is, for example, it's a program support material, you don't have to, um, and these, you don't have to go through and select no on these, um, just yes if it meets that, that content that you're uploading. Um, if it's a uh, you know, a document or a word uh, PDF or um, possibly in a learning management system export or a video, for example. So um, all these are there, but again, if, if it's no, you don't have to, you don't have to hit the no um, radio button, okay? And then finally, um, just one last, make sure they got the CC BY license on it, yes. Click next, and then yeah, finally get to here to you choose the file to upload. And I'm just going to go to my desktop here and put that in there, the voluntary template. If I had other files I wanted to upload, I could upload a file and add another. Um, I don't. I'm just going to go to the next page and then complete the submission, kind of review it, make sure everything is good. If I wanted, found something, oh, I should have put something else in here, um, I can go ahead and make a change before I go to the final submission page. Okay? So that's all available right there. Uh, go to the next. And this is the terms of service. So at the bottom here, uh, grant terms of service and the submissions complete. That's it. And then you, <laughs> and then you, then you'll receive an email. Uh, you'll receive an email that your submission was accepted, and you'll have a URL link, and then you can go and view it. Um, once you upload something, if you have uploaded one or two things and you want me to have a look, send me the link to that and I'll go take a look, make sure everything looks good. Any feedback you need on that and just kind of help you as a service. Um, but that's completely, you know, voluntary. That's up to you if you like that, but just to make that available. Um, but honestly, once you get going on this process, um, most people, uh, I think everyone we've talked to is pretty painless. Um, once you get going, you kind of get in a groove and it just kind of goes pretty quick. So, um, questions, comments? We have four. Yeah, and I'm going to add that into the guide. So, um, Rick, I think we're going to let you go because we, we're, we've got lunch waiting for us. And I have just a few comments that I want to make before. Um, before we leave for lunch. Thank you very much. We really appreciate the, uh, the review. You bet. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Yeah.